Oh, hold up. Yeah. Are you telling me that that you didn't spin the globe? I'm, that's what exactly what I'm telling you. So, oh my so, gosh. No, no, no. Hear me out. The I internet mean, is fake. I was the most subscribed to music artist in the world for that month. If you join a label, is 95% of our YouTube videos going to get copywritten? Yeah, probably. probably yeah. yeah. Damn. I would, like, to do list. I like name to name think drop C-Boys. Hey guys, welcome back to the Life Out Open podcast. Before we get into it today, I have a message from our sponsor, ShipStation. When it comes to running an online business, your shipping department is not the place to start cutting corners. That's why we put Big Ken in charge. And when it comes to saving money as a small business owner, every little bit helps. So worry less about the bottom line when you save money with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code Wide Open today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code Wide Open. Thanks guys. Let's get into the podcast. Do you want to be in my interview, Ben? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm going around interviewing guys that wear shirts too small for them because they don't work out, but they still want to look jacked. Is it working? Is that? Uh, kind of. Is All that right. a medium? <laughs> no, I think it's a large. Mike, do you want to be in my interview? <laughs> sure. Okay, cool. Because I'm just interviewing guys that run around the hotel blacked out by themselves at four in the morning and pass out in the uh, alley. <laughs> or the, what is it? The hallway? The hallway. <laughs> the fucking alley. The alley, alley you sounds know, a lot The worse. room alley. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, that's a good way to end up in the clink. Yeah, yeah that's for sure, bro. Well, should we run that's it? For sure. Let's Let's run it. I legit can't believe that we're doing this right now. It's just, it's cool to meet you. It's cool to 100%. meet you. 100%. It's we're, cool to we're meet big you. Fans. Wait, are, we're big fans. Yeah, yeah for did, sure. Did we start? We're yeah, rolling. We're rolling. Yeah, uh, who do I thank for... Uh, Putting my music in your videos. I mean, we kind of I mean, all. Of yeah, us, I think all for of us. sure these the guys. Editors. But dude, okay, awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. Today's guest is a rapper and a songwriter. If you've watched a single C Boys TV mm. YouTube video or been on TikTok or Instagram, you've definitely heard one of his viral songs. Welcome on the podcast, hey. Connor Price. Thank you so much, you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I suppose you've probably never been in a studio this nice before, huh? <laughs> this is, you know what's funny? I have recorded every single one of my songs with a Shure SM7B. This exact. I was, these and are I was the best. going to be my next question. Yeah. I, I love this microphone. Yeah. That's these have so been around the, for a long time, too. Like, these are just the industry standard, it kind of seems like. I remember I saw a video of Logic on a tour bus recording, mm. it, like, all his songs for a project off of this mic. And then he had, like, a uh, Apollo twin interface, the little mm -hmm. the silver square thing. And I was like, I need that. And, yeah. and I got that and this microphone, and I've recorded all my music with, the, with those two pieces. They're the best. Yeah. They're the best. When we first started making, or when we were looking at getting into podcasting, mm -hmm. we were like, well, I mean, let's just look and see what, like, Joe Rogan uses. Yeah. And we just would, like, screenshot the biggest podcasters and send it in the group chat and, like, we got to order this. Yeah, no, so many podcasts use this mic, if not all of them. Like, yeah, it seems like so. every clip you see, it's this microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, anyways, we're we're in the uh, beautiful Planet Hollywood <laughs> room. I, I've it, never been in this hotel before. Yeah, no, it, it's probably a, for good reason. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you live in Las Vegas? I do. So I live in Henderson, which is a suburb like twenty minutes out. Um, I've lived here for about three years now. Really? So, so how, how'd you end up here? Yeah, yeah. So born and raised in Markham, which is a, a little town about twenty five minutes northeast of Toronto. So grew up in Canada, um, lived there my whole life. And I started acting when I was really young, when I was six years old, which we could probably get into later. Yep. Um, but uh, because of that career, I spent a lot of time in L.A. And so I would split my time between Canada and L.A. And then I got married young. I was engaged at 21, got married at 22. And my wife, Brianna, she has family that lives in Vegas. And uh, her little sister, Chloe, used to be a child actor. And so when I was young acting, um, I would come to L.A. and I used to stay at this apartment complex called the Oakwood Apartments which was like known for having a bunch of like child actors stay there who were like pursuing a career in, in acting and families would come there with their kids. Um, and that's actually how I met my wife when I was 10 years old. She wow. was, she was 11. We were staying at this, this apartment complex. We stayed in the same spot. Um, fast forward a bunch of years um, and we're married now, but Brianna had, my wife Brianna had family that lives out here. And so when we lived in LA, we would take the drive, the like three and a half hour drive or so from LA to Vegas, like almost every weekend just to visit. Nice. And I just, we just fell in love with the area and LA is really fun to visit, but living there is tough. I find, um, just the kind of energy of yeah. the space and the traffic and the smog and the air. Uh, like we've never been, we actually really? have, we have a, we have a shoot there in a week from now. So we are making okay. our way. We've been on a two week, well, we're on a two week long RV trip. Wow. Z boys TV across America, second yeah. annual. So that's what's happening. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. what you guys were doing out here. Yeah, yeah, no. So we've just been 
been cruising around making YouTube vids, obviously, and I then love it. I love podcast. It. So, uh, but yeah, so so Las Vegas, like, what yeah. do you what do you do you participate in all of the uh, activities around here? Or? No, and I'm like rarely on the strip. Um, yeah, people assume that. I like, feel like if you live here, it's like you don't. Not really. No, it's so touristy. It's it's like there's incredible restaurants. So I'll come here probably like twice a month just for mm-hmm. like a, like a nice like re- like my favorite restaurant Zuma is in um, the Cosmo, the top floor of the Cosmo. If you guys are looking for a place, you might to have to check that out. Yeah. Zuma is my favorite restaurant in the world. It's incredible. I've never gambled a day in my life. Yeah. So you you're you're a very clean guy. Yeah, as far as yeah, like, like yeah. you don't swear in your songs, right? You don't do yeah, yeah. No, really. I don't. I don't really drink. It just um, seems like Las Vegas is like a strange place to. You'd think, yeah. yeah. And if it weren't for f- having family out here and visiting, um, and falling in love with the area, and now, because c- it was also like it's so it's close enough to L.A. that if I do mm-hmm. need to be there for acting stuff or whatever, I can I can take the forty minute flight and stay with some friends there. But the cost of living out here is so much better. Um, I find the quality of life out here is way better than California. Um, when I think about raising a kid, which Brianna and I have now, we have our, our son, Jude. Congrats yeah. on that, thank by you. the way. Yeah, yeah you got a whole song about him. He's 11 yeah. months, I do, yeah. yeah. And so when I thought about raising a family, I never saw L.A. as that place. Yeah. But when we came to visit here, it's just incredible. Like, so Hen- Henderson, the area I live, I recently learned, is the fourth fastest growing city in the U.S., and the second safest, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's growing so quick in between like the Raiders and the golden Knights. There's now all yeah. this like sports fandom that's coming to the town and it's just exploding. It's, it's taxes really exciting too, to see. Man, this is the best place to live for yeah, as far it's, as taxes. It's one of the, or one of them. Yeah. The zero income. Yeah. State tax. Yeah. It's fantastic. So, so you were a child actor. Mm-hmm. What, what, what was that like? Um, so yeah, I started when I was six years old, the way that that happened. So I'm one of five kids in my family. So I've got a bunch of siblings. Um, I'm right in the middle, two younger, two older, and the younger two are twins. Um, and my mom was friends with this woman in Canada who started Twins Talent Agency. And no one in my family had ever been in entertainment at all. So this was all just like... Was this your choice or did they kind of push you into it? Um, it was definitely my choice. So the way that it happened was um, my mom, who was friends with this woman, Cindy, who started Twins Talent. She, so this woman was like, hey, you know, you have twins. You should consider them, uh, consider putting them into, you know into the, the acting world, uh, especially kids, you know, the whole Cole and yeah. Dylan Sprouse thing. The reason that works so well, if you're identical, especially, is two actors okay. can play the same character, yeah. rotate, you get more hours uh, out yeah, of them. Yeah, they did that on Full, mm, yeah. no, what was it? No, Full, full, full House full with house, uh, yeah. Mary Kay and Ashley. Yep. Yeah, exactly, yeah. good example. So yeah. they were only oh, yeah, hiring yeah. twins. A, a lot of times, yeah, producers would prefer twins because hmm. um, kids under, under a certain age can only work a certain amount of hours. Oh. So if you have two, you can like, get it's a it's a little ex, exploitative but so you really I, didn't have a normal childhood then i guess not but it yeah so so they started first and then i saw how much fun they were having and i was like mom i want to try this too and so when i was six i jumped in started with commercials and when i was 10 i did a movie called cinderella man where i played the son of russell crowe and that was like the first kind That's of insane. yeah like huge project that i was a part of that was the first time i went to la for the premiere and then i signed with a u.s agent and i've just been doing tv and film ever since so um, were you in normal school then? or I was, they, yeah. Oh, so you yeah. still managed to be in just normal. I was. That was important to me. Uh, so went to public elementary school, went to high school in the States, uh, did two years in the States, two years in Canada, but was always in public school, yeah. What do you think is the reason for all of these child actors growing up to become, like, absolute shitbags? <laughs> you can't say all of them. He, <laughs> no, he's yeah, great. No, no, <laughs> you no, turned no, out no, great. But no, no, it's a, it's a l- great yeah, majority it's a trend. question. Well, I mean, especially yeah, the like Disney the actors. Like you got Macaulay. Mac- Macaulay Culkin, yeah. like that'd be the the number one turned into a shit bag. Did he? I don't think he did. Oh, dude. I thought he got into like some mad drugs. Anyway, no, I, I think, think you're thinking because of, Aaron of Michael Carter. Jackson. You're thinking of Aaron Carter. But, I mean, may, I'm pretty there, sure there, there may have been a, a, a drug situation, but I I think now he seems to be yeah doing he's well, doing, what, doing, doing very well. well. That's yeah. good. That's yeah. good. But I don't know. You, you know, I I never had anywhere near the the fandom of someone like you know Kevin McAllister from Home Alone like that. I can't imagine what what that was like for a kid. Like I've, I've pretty, it's got to fuck you up. Yeah. It's hard for me to speak on that because I, I've never really had that level of fame as, as a child. And I can only imagine what kind of rooms there, what kind of parties they're around. And then, you know, Mm -hmm. drugs could be rampant and and you're young and you're impressionable. And maybe it's a parent thing. Like I, I'm very fortunate because I, I have like incredible parents who always kept me grounded and level-headed and made sure I wasn't being stupid so it it seems like a lot of those people like you look at like Britney Spears or like Lindsay Lohan or 
um, you know, a lot of the ones that kind of went off the rails, it, it, it seems like their parents didn't have much of a grasp on them. And then also, I mean, I, you're getting so much fame and money at a young age, it, you just like have no sense of reality, I would imagine, by the time you're 18, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah how, how does that work? Do they set up like a bank account for the kid, yeah. but it, it's still all managed by the parents? So in the U.S., it's called a Coogan account which was named after a famous child actor. Do you know about this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You keep going. Sorry. Sure, sure. No, no, no. It's good. You're like, no, no. Finally, someone knows it because I yeah. talked about this. I'm not, yeah, I've never heard I, of it. Okay. So there's this famous uh, child actor named Jackie Coogan, who I believe was like very famous in like the 20s and, and made, made a lot of money as a, as a kid. But there were no rules set up about putting money aside for kids that his parents uh, spent, them, spent it all. Huh. And he, he was broke by the time he was, you know, 18 or whatever. Um, and so they set up a, a Coogan account named after this child actor where I believe I believe it's 25 percent. And in Canada, it's 15 percent. But in the U.S., I believe it's 25 percent of every dollar that a minor makes goes into an account that no one can can touch until that minor turns 18. And then they have to go into the bank and take it out. Oh, really? So it's completely protected. Yeah. In Canada, it's called a minor's trust fund. And then in the U.S., it's called a Coogan account. Um, and no one can touch that until that kid turns 18 and then he gets all of it. I've heard countless stories just from growing up as a child actor and knowing other yeah. child actors who have grown up and there, there there's a lot of that of, cause he, even then, even, you know, 25% is put aside. There's still yeah. the other yeah. chunk that what the kids might not ever it? see. And, and yeah, I don't it's, know. It, it, can get, like, it can get messy. It seems like some of these parents, like they were just like putting them, trying to make them actors. Oh, Kieran and and it, yeah. yeah, it almost seems like the parents weren't even working. They were just like. You make the money. <laughs> like they were working the kids. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that specific situation, so it's hard for me to yeah, speak yeah. on that. But I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure that that happens. That yeah, parents yeah. can definitely like kind of live vicariously through yeah. their children and exploit that in a, yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about a switched role. I even think about that with like uh, Addison Ray or Charlie D'Amelio mm -hmm. when they were like blowing up on TikTok. and then their parents were blowing up because they were getting famous. Like, mm, yeah. dude, what a weird scenario. Yeah. Can you imagine your mom becoming a TikToker, just or even worse, your dad becoming just because their kid is such yeah. a big TikToker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they're like fifty. I, I I have seen like you know that this whole like stage mom thing. Not that this situation we're talking about is, but I have seen in many scenarios child actors whose whose parents are just absolute stage parents, and they're they're. It's very clear that this dream is theirs, yeah. and not the kids. Yeah. And I, I've even seen to the point of a child actor being fired off of a show because of the mom being so difficult on set. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My uh, my sister's boyfriend used to work for Dance Moms, mm. and and he has plenty of stories about I, that whole that's world. A whole other world, isn't it? Yeah, because because yeah. Dance Moms just in general dude, without that, sh the that show is crazy. Dude, <laughs> yeah, just the yeah, clips dude. I see, I'm like, God damn. Yeah, <laughs> and he, I was like, how real is that? My girlfriend's totally into it, asking every question. And she all knows all the names of the moms, and he's like, "Oh no, it's real. I believe These it. Mo dance moms are crazy. I believe it. And they they just get amped up with the cameras because then they just like drama gets involved, and then the producers are like trying to twist it. Oh, totally. And they're, they're if when it's a reality show too, they're gonna make it worse, and like yeah. uh, they they want that drama. They feed off that. So yeah. How do your peers like react to you being in movies and stuff? Being that you're still in school, they they like it they make fun of you like what was Weird, it like weirdly enough it was very normal I, I don't know you know it's interesting one one of my best friends also growing up was also an actor and so the two of us were doing it and then my little brothers were doing it and then my two older siblings were doing it too Just and normal. we were all in the same school so it was sort of like it wasn't like I was the one kid that was doing it there was weirdly like a like a lot of actors in the in the school and it was just sort of like it, it very quickly became normal I, I was never it's pretty cool I never felt like a like a out cider because of it i was never made fun of luckily it was just like oh yeah that's connor he's the actor nice. guy like yeah whatever did you know how to spit bars back then or when did you come come into this i've always loved hip-hop music i shared a room with my older brother my whole childhood uh, he's two years older than me and, and he loved hip-hop and was like always playing it in our room so i was just i was always listening to it whether it was like early eminem lupe fiasco mf doom stuff like that um and i, I just always loved it but I, I had never thought about doing it myself until around high school when I really started becoming obsessed with like the underground, like YouTube hip hop kind of scene and like all these artists doing like ciphers and, and even like rap battles. I would watch all that. And yeah, that was hot back in the day. Oh, totally. 2012. Uh, oh, like King of the Dot and all yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. Oh man. Um, and so I've just kind of became obsessed with that and watching artists, like especially on YouTube who were like, because I, I always viewed this music as like, oh, these like huge production values and the, they must have these massive studios and the music videos are crazy. And it, it just always felt something that was out of reach for, for, for me. 
and then seeing like a lot of artists on YouTube just like doing it in the room it, yeah. and like filming videos on their phone and I was like oh th this is this is doable like may maybe I could try this and that that was the first kind of like I remember a moment in my head where I was like maybe I should do something with this because I do sometimes freestyle with friends for fun and sometimes I get a good reaction and people say you sound like you know what you're doing and so I was like oh maybe I should try this and so the first thing that I did was I bought like this USB microphone off Amazon um, and I started uploading music to YouTube anonymously. Like I would enter rap contests and not tell anybody, not even my family. What year was this? Mm, that would have been like 2012, maybe 2000, okay, yeah. 2012, 2013, I think. Um, and I, I entered a few competitions. I like won two of them. That was the start of something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I won two of them. And then, um, uh, that really just kind of gave me the confidence to be like, okay, may, may, maybe I am good at this. Maybe I should ex this. explore yeah. this more. Um, and then I didn't end up taking it serious till years later just because acting was kind of the main priority for me. But then it switched uh, around COVID when mm -hmm. acting completely stopped, all the production stopped. And I was yeah. like, okay, I need to go all in on something. And I always had this music thing, so I decided to just go for it. And It's, it's dope that you went all in on it, but I, I love that you uh, approached it like, well, so you, you were like reading everything. Social media is there. I can make something happen. And then you did. Like, I'm not saying you, you had a lot of the basis in like growing up listening to hip hop, but mm -hmm. like, you're just like, I think I can, like, we'll get into it later, sure. but like your angles on TikTok are just brilliant. Mm, thank you. Like, it's just, it's, it's too good. I, I have to give like so much credit to my wife, Brianna, cause she was the one. So early on, I remember in like 2015, 2016, this is when we were just uh, dating. Um, I, she was one of the first people I decided to like show my music to. I was like, I don't usually, you know, I'm like, I do this thing anonymously on YouTube. I normally don't tell. Why, why were you doing it? was still anonymously. all anonymous. Well, the reason I was doing it anonymously be, was because, and this is like my number one regret in life is, is I genuinely was worried about what people would think. I was right. worried about what my friends would think. I was worried about what my peers would think. And I, I'm already like the, the actor kid. So it's like, if I want to start rapping, I just knew all the eyes would roll and rightfully so. And they did, but you know, ultimately you just kind of kept going to a point where they're like, oh wow, this is actually working out for him. I had a friend in high school that it was similar. He was a a producer and he was selling beats to like kid ink mm. um you know, like rappers at the time uh he actually he actually did pop out with polo g so he's iceberg oh wow okay but uh anyways he, he was the same thing yeah. he, he never would tell anyone i was like bro this is so cool like why don't you tell like this is the coolest thing like you're making money off this like but it was the same yeah same thing he was just worried about what other people would think yeah a, a small part of it too is i wanted to prove to myself that um, like especially doing the whole anonymously on the contest and stuff. Like if I did put it out as Connor Price and was using, uh, again, not, not that I was like really had a crazy amount of fame as an actor, but th there was an element of that that I could see. Like if I did win a contest, people would be like, oh, he just won because he's, he's the actor guy, yeah. whatever. So I wanted to prove that like if nobody knew who I was and what the face was and I didn't use my real name, I just uploaded it completely anonymously to still win those competitions. I was like, okay. This is, this is, you know, people, people are liking what I'm doing. There must be something here that I should explore. What was um, the name under your anonymous ooh, it, name? It was awful. This might, is this the first time I'm saying it? Uh, uh, yeah, you don't have to if you no, don't want no, to. No, I will. Like, it's, it's an awful name. It's like the cringiest thing ever. But I just went by unidentified. But I spelled, <laughs> but, but, no, it gets worse. Yeah. But I spelled it un, like E-Y-E, unidentified. Yeah. <laughs> and then the logo was an I. I'm like, what? I like Why? it. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> that was stupid. Um, yeah. At the time, I'm like, this is brilliant. Um, yeah, stupid. But uh, yeah, that, that was the name I went by. I was just looking up when we found you, mm. uh, March 11th, 2021, so about two years ago. Okay. And uh, the first song was Typical Rapper. Mm. And uh, uh, Dude, I remember. Like, I remember it, coming into your office and being like, dude, you got to check this guy out. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. we're and, always... And hopefully his, his songs aren't, at the time, copyrighted, and then from there. Yeah, bro, because we're always looking for music on SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. Still, even though like we have like... 15 different paid subscription for uncopyrighted music. Yeah, yeah. Um, but SoundCloud, you just find way, I think, way yeah, higher quality, music, like rap yeah. songs and stuff like that. So it's still scouring SoundCloud. So that, that was how you guys first found me was on SoundCloud? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't no, know. I, I, yeah, it was, I saw a TikTok and then I oh, okay, immediately, okay, okay. Like, for me, most of mine is just, is music. And then I just quickly dip over to SoundCloud, send it to Ben. Yeah. And it was like, it was just too good. I, I do, I do want to say thank you that, uh, you know, you guys using my songs and your videos have an impact on my streaming and my audience. Like I always know when you guys are using one of my songs because my YouTube gets flooded with 
I'm here from the Sea Boys. I'm here from the Sea Boys. Really? Who else yeah, is here yeah, from yeah. the Sea Boys? Oh yeah, no, it's crazy. Um, and I have had a lot of people like DM me being like, yeah, ever since I heard your song in the Sea Boys video, I've been a fan. So That's I awesome. so I just want to say thank you because it, it really does make a difference. Hey guys, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, ShipStation. When it comes to running an online business, your shipping department is not the place to start cutting corners or trying to cheap out anywhere. And when it comes to saving money as a business owner, every little bit helps. When you lower shipping costs and make returns easy by using ShipStation, your customers stay happy while you save money. ShipStation is super easy to use. We love that it puts all of orders in one dashboard and makes it super easy to compare rates between UPS and USPS. Uh, depending on the package that you're shipping, its weight, its size, stuff like that it can be much cheaper or faster to send it one service via the other so we love that they make it easy to compare back and forth and figure out what is the best option to send it uh, if you guys are on the fence now is the time to join with a free 60-day trial ShipStation effortlessly integrates everywhere you sell online including Amazon eBay Shopify and more over 130,000 companies have chose to grow their e-commerce business with ShipStation and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So guys, worry less about the bottom line when you're saving money with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code WIDEOPEN today to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code WIDEOPEN, which is all caps. Thanks, guys. Back to the podcast. We've probably used like 20 songs. I know. Oh, really? No, I know. Right. And and yeah. in the montages and stuff, I'm like, this yeah. is awesome. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's bro. been It's been so cool for us, especially uh, when you made it on the Top 100 Billboard. Dude, we were pumped. Yeah. We were pumped. Well, bro, I've actually I've never made Hot, hot 100. I, I, I wish well, I did. You were, I thought you had 15. 15. Last time bro. I saw it, you were on, wasn't he? I mean, there's there's like Spotify charts that I'm on, whether it's like viral charts, but the actual official um, oh. billboard I, Maybe I have. I was looking at the wrong thing. Well, right. I guess it was we'll literally like on then, we're manifesting. It'll, yeah. It'll yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it'll happen for sure. Yeah, dude. No, and I've been DMing you on Instagram too, because I think you were like, hey, bro, thanks for using yeah, my yeah, song. Yeah. And I was like, dude, you're killing it. And I guarantee one day you're going to be massive yeah. and we're going to look back at it. And then, uh, yeah, that was two years ago. And I'd, I'd say it's uh, definitely coming into fruition. That's two years well, ago you. already. I'm that sure is, yeah, time time fly, time's time been fly. flying for yeah, you. Bro. I remember when you dropped the Spin the Globe mm -hmm. challenge. Yeah. And that was like the first video that went like viral, viral, right? Yeah, like 70 million on TikTok, 60 wow. million on YouTube shorts at the moment. Yeah, Ooh. crazy. And, and once that happened, I was like, Called it. Called it. <laughs> yeah, that was a huge moment. That, that changed everything. Um, and again, credit to my wife. That Spin the Globe was all her idea. So she, she's the one who like, um, whenever I'm done with a song, I'll sit with her because her background is in, you know, just figuring out how to market something. Uh, yeah, she used so to be the creative director at this pet company and she would have to market these products. So now she pretty much does the same thing, but treats my songs as the products. And so she's full time my manager. We work together and that's that's all I have on my team. I'm independent. No label. It's just me and her running lean. Yeah, I, I edit all my TikToks. I film all my TikToks. And so we're so just much. completely DIY. Yeah. And so when I finish a song, I'll sit with her and I'll be like, all right, how do we market this? What's what's the what's the standout element of the song, whether it's the, you know, uh, the beat, the flute. It's like, oh, what if we make a flute out of a carrot? And, it, we, you know, the carrot flute skit was born yeah. like that. Or for this one, it was I had this song with this artist from Zambia. And we were like, how do we market that? Because that's such a cool angle. You're from Canada. He's from Zambia, this country in Africa that most people don't even know where it is on a map. I didn't. Oh, hold up. Yeah. Are you telling me that that you didn't spin the globe? I'm, that's what exactly what I'm telling you. So, oh my so gosh, no, 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 man. but here, hear me out. The <laughs> internet is fake. Hear me out. All so, right, so, okay, on. well, let, let me tell you the whole story of how this, this <laughs> happened. All right, so the song, the first one, which is called Violet, um, the song with Killa, um, which was the first spin the globe. Yep. So I was making that song for the new Fast and Furious movie. They wanted me to make a song that they were going to place in the film, which I was like over the moon about. That's and so sick. They yeah. wanted a hip hop song for a heist sequence in Europe in the next film, um, which is why that song has like these Euro house drums that come in randomly because they're like, we need to add some Euro element. And so I was working on the song with them and then at the last minute they decided to go a different route. So they're like, we're not gonna use the song. I'm like, well, damn. But at least now so I, I have it. Now I have this awesome song. It's like a chorus and a verse. And what should I do with it? Like, should I finish it? Should I put it out? And then Brianna was like, what if we get Killa on it? Who was this artist that I connected with earlier that year? Who's from Zambia? Who's like this incredible rapper, super underrated. At the time we did the song, he had under a thousand monthly listeners. Now he has close to 2 million. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and so we put him on the song and then we were like, all right, how do we market this? And then we had the idea. She was like, what if you spin a globe and land on Zambia? And I was like, ah, oh, okay, whatever. Like we really were like, that's eh, a throwaway piece of content. It's not a skit. It might not do well because all my content that was converting well were my skits. And so we put it up and it was just one of those things where like in the first hour, it was like 
800,000 views or whatever. And the, the like to view ratio was higher than anything mm -hmm. I posted. I was like, oh no, this is going to go crazy. Woke up in the morning, it was like 3 million, hour later, four, by the end of the day, 10. And it just like kept going. And all the comments were like, do more, spin the globe again, spin the globe again. And so it, it started as like a, like a fluke. It was just like, I have the song with this artist from Zambia, let's spin the globe. And then it was like, oh, we need to turn this into a series ASAP. Like the, 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 the whole thing for this series that I wanted to maintain was finding underrated, independent, up and coming artists from other countries and giving them a platform that they didn't have it, that I luckily had through TikTok. And so all, all seven of the artists, none of them were, were with labels. They were all independent. They were all, I tried to keep them under 30,000 monthly listeners. Um, the, like that's the, the second guy uh, from the Netherlands, Benz, when we put out Spinning, yeah. which is now my number one song. He had 30,000 monthly listeners, and now he has close to 3 million. He's the second most listened to artist on Spotify in the Netherlands right now. Dude, that's be, crazy. Because of that song. Isn't that, isn't that nice? I, I mean, that's that, the power love, of the internet. Like, that's that the power you, of social media right now. you curated that, though, that, that you were like, well, let's, like, you could pick anybody up probably at this point. And you would be, you would be amazed to see how many emails I got from labels, being like Universal oh, Australia, man, being bet. like, hey, uh, how much money do you want for us yeah. to put our Australian artists on your next spin the globe? I was like, no, this is not how this is going to work. Like, I, I need these artists to like, that's not the point. If I'm just going to put on artists that are already on labels, like who, who are we really helping here? The label. Right. And that's not the point. It's, it's, it's got to be like a, an easy no, but also a tough no. Uh, no, know, it, it's an easy no. Because no. I'm like, look, the artist you're talking about is already with the label. All the power to them. They're doing great. But I, I want to give a platform to artists who don't have that platform. Yeah. Um, and so that was important to me. And also being independent, I own the masters. And so I'm giving all these artists a percentage of the song. And they're all earning off of, off of the song. Yeah, That's so sick, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I remember when you first released it, though. And seeing that the, the Instagram... I'm not super big on TikTok. But the Instagram reel was going hella viral yeah. on instagram but your instagram was like growing like 100k a day yeah yeah it was crazy. it's it's amazing how much the globe content converted and i think the reason it did was because it was a series so people were like like one video would go viral and they're like oh, i wonder where he's going to spin next i'm going to follow him so i see his next video yeah and so because it was like a series and like episode two episode three episode four where am i going to spin next it like converted to followers so well amazingly too on youtube shorts when i first started posting the globe series on youtube um for the month of November, I found out from YouTube that I was the most subscribed to music artists in the world for that month. I got 760,000 subscribers in that month. <clears throat> wow. And I got almost, almost 90, 95,000 just in one day. Wow, um, and that's so crazy, it just, bro. it just completely blew up on YouTube. And you cracked the algorithm. Uh, it felt like yeah. that. Like you it were, felt like that. I yeah. was like, yeah, this Globe series, like anywhere I post it, it converts really well. It's getting the song streams. I get a lot of followers. The artists that I connect with, like when I would post it on Instagram, I do a collab post. So now they're getting a bunch of attention. When I post a song on Spotify, I make them a primary artist, not a featured artist. Because if they were a featured artist, they wouldn't get the monthly listeners. It would show on their thing as getting streams, but they won't get the monthly listeners. Mm -hmm. But because I made them a primary artist, so instead of Connor Price featuring Killa, it's Connor Price and Killa, yep. they'd get the monthly listeners. So everybody was just like profit and, you know, winning and profiting off this content doing so well. Uh, it's got to mean so much to these guys that are getting couple thousand listeners and then you come in there give them that opportunity and then you basically gave them a career well like but also they 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 capitalized like like i would reach out to these artists i was on such a time crunch because it was going viral so quickly and i knew like if i wait a month for episode two no one's gonna care yeah and so i was like i need to get the second episode out fast and so when i reached out to the guy from the netherlands he sent me his verse and his video in 48 hours <laughs> And then I, I uploaded it to DistroKid the next day. It went, it went live that Friday. And then I did all the Globe content. He sent me his stuff. I edit, like We were working quick. So, so to that point, I was lucky enough to have a platform to give them, but they all just like capitalized off the opportunity. They killed their verses. They made amazing content to help it grow. So all the power to them because they, they, really, they could have dropped the ball, but they didn't. And they, they all really kind of uh, capitalized off of it and made the song way better than I could have on my own. Seem like spinning, especially in like the motorsports world that we're in, went like super viral on Instagram because yeah. everyone was just using it then for their own. They were yeah. just stitching it on their own. Can you just like rap a little bit of it, just so like everyone watching is like, I think I know what he's talking about. And then as oh, soon as yeah. you, they said that it, I couldn't do it, so I went and did it. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, dude. Yeah. Everyone's right like, on the drive. all right, yep, yeah. got it. Yeah, I think it was like the perfect lyric for. 
like a tra- like a like a um, what's the word? I guess like a transition moment. Like yep. they said that I couldn't do it, so I went and did it. So it's like the the first part is like um, they underestimated me, and then here's my achievement yep. on the drop. It was like the perfect like soundbite. Yeah. And I I don't know how I didn't think about that, but the first time I saw someone do it, I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I really hope this catches on. And then specifically on reels, it was like I felt like one day every yeah. reel I was looking at was using yeah. the song, and it just it was amazing. How many uh, reels have used that song spinning? Can one of you guys look that up? Yeah, yeah Evans, Evans used it. Yeah. We've used I, I it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's somewhere between two fifty and three hundred thousand, I think. That's crazy, man. That's yeah. just like and then that's just organic people marketing your song. Yeah. You know what's amazing? I have not paid one dollar on advertising my music. Everything is completely organic. I create vertical content. I post it on shorts. I post it on TikTok. I post it on Reels. I just started posting <coughs> on Snapchat. Um, I post music videos on YouTube, obviously, Facebook, stuff like that. But I, I don't pay I don't I don't pay for ads. I just let it go organically. So you've always been anti label. Hundred percent. Right? Hundred percent. And you rep that. Because we've done a yeah. podcast talking about how like, you know, people are using social media to build all these careers and especially the music career, and we use you as an example of it. But um yeah, so you were just always don't want a label, never going to conform to that. They, what, what was the reasoning behind yeah, that? And I, I do want to say I'm not necessarily like, oh, all, all labels are evil, stuff like that. There's obviously deals that are just awful, but there's a lot of artists who really work well with labels. Um, some artists truly are such masters at their craft of songwriting. They have no idea how to market. They have no idea how to create content, which, which is totally fine. And so they need a label to give that push. For, for me specifically, I, I love making content. I love editing. I'm, I'm at the moment trying to, because I'm realizing I spend so much time editing my content that I should probably hand that off to someone else. So I'm in the process of working with an editor. Yeah, but I just kind of where I, we're at too. I, I, but I love it. Like I, sometimes I love editing the content more than making the song. I just, yeah. I love seeing it come together. I love doing the skits, all that. That's you so, want to be our editor? Yeah. 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 We yeah, use right. your songs yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll just market them. It's just a win-win. But yeah, I, I mean, you guys could speak more on it, but like, you have what you create and you don't want to hand it off, but like you maybe should like, so that's what I'm saying like you're, you're, if you're editing your stuff, like it is clearly top tier. It's, it's your own thing. Well, it's your own touch. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, working with another editor, obviously there's going to be things he does differently, but it's just working with them and you figure yeah. out, he'll figure out what I like and we'll, we'll figure out that pathway there. Yeah. But so for me, it's like, I love doing, you know, with Brianna, with my wife, we love doing the marketing. We love coming up with the ideas, the content, I record everything with this microphone in my room. I send it to my brother-in-law who mixes and masters. Like we keep, uh, mixes and masters the, the music. So we keep everything in house. Our overhead is really low. And when we have, cause I've had Zoom calls with every label. I'm always open to hearing, I'm, like I'm not just gonna be like, I'm not talking to you. You're all evil. It's not that at all. I'm just, um, every conversation I've had with them, I've left the Zoom calls just being like, I don't think they could do anything for me that I can't already do on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the thing- They're gonna be offering a bag though at this point. Yeah, yeah but but it's that's the thing. The way that advances work is it's it's recoupable. So it's technically a loan. So to like, to because people don't really necessarily know how this works, but let's, let's say a label gives you a million dollars, but on average, they're also gonna take 80% of the mastered. So they're gonna take 80% of the song. So you're left with 20%, assuming you own 100% of it, but normally there's producers, there's other stuff, so it's not 20%. But let's say let's say you do own all of it and you have 20%. If a label is, is advancing you a million dollars, what's gonna happen is they're going to profit 80% off of your music on the side, and on your 20%, the first million you make off of your 20% goes to them because the loan is recoupable. Mm-hmm. So they're making 80% on the side and also getting back their million dollars and so, so people just think like, oh, wow, you got a million bucks. It's like, it's like, no, yeah. there it's a recoupable, it's technically a loan. And then obviously you take taxes into account and then, you know, managers and this and that. It's like, you're not left with much. And then you just spend, you spend your whole career paying back a label. How many rappers do you think realize that? That like sign with a label, they get the million bucks you, advanced? You hear, that's why you hear horror stories like this all the time. Um about artists just getting screwed over in label deals. And, and now they have to, especially in rap, you know, you have to kind of, a lot of artists who are making it in rap, like put out this facade and this lifestyle of like, you know, the fancy cars and all this kind of stuff. And then, and then COVID hits and the real way that they can make money because they're not making it off streaming music is shows and merch. Mm-hmm. Now they can't do shows and merch and now they're struggling, but they have to maintain this lifestyle of like fancy cars and they're going into debt. It's like, I've heard, I've heard awful stories and I feel really sorry for those artists because they've just, put themselves in a deal and they just didn't have the right entertainment lawyer or someone looking over their stuff to say, Hey, this isn't good. Yeah. And I, I feel for those artists because that that's a, a sh- crappy position to be in. 
Um, what, one other thing I'll add to of a mindset that I brought into music that makes me, me that makes me personally anti-label is on the acting side, there are so many people that that are gatekeepers um, and so many doors that have to open for you to get a part. There's like, like you, you need an agent, you need a manager, you need um, a casting director to like you enough to have you come into the room. The producer has to like you, the director has to like you. All these stars have to align and all these people have to say yes just for you to get the opportunity to work. Um, and that's like my least favorite part is because as an actor, you really have such little control and so much of it is luck. Just like the right part being written at the right time and you being there and, and it being a good audition. And there's just, there's so many stars that have to align and so many people who are in the way and it's very frustrating. So on music, I have full control as an independent artist. I can say what I want. I can work with the producers I want. I can upload it when I want. I use this website called DistroKid that allows me to upload unlimited amount of music um, for like $35 a year. $35 a year, unlimited music. Um, and they put it on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, everywhere. And then they're the ones that, you know, when the, the streaming numbers are released every month, you get paid through DistroKid. Um, and so I can upload and put music out when I want. I can market it how I want through my social media. Like no one can tell me no. No one can say, hey, you can't put this out this week because you're competing with our label artist or whatever. And so oh. I can, I have full control. And that's so important to me because I feel like in acting, I have very little control. So in this part of my career, I want to maintain as much control as I can. And being independent is by far the best way to do that. How is streaming money? If you're streaming a lot, very good. To put it into perspective, um, on average, 1 million streams on Spotify is $4,000. Let's see. Where's my phone? So Spotify for Artists will tell me how many streams I got in the last month. And assuming that you're independent and you own. So because I'm independent, I own anywhere between... 80 to 100 percent of my songs depending on if there's a featured artist etc so let's see the last 28 days my catalog has done 60 million streams so wow making a bag i, making I a mean bag, yeah. like if let's you, go if you, if you are streaming a lot it's there's a lot of money yeah that's when people ask like how is the youtube ad revenue and it's like well if you get a lot of views on on youtube monthly pretty good yeah if you don't what, what not would, very good not what very would good. you say is like like for a million views on YouTube, what, what's the average payout? It, it kind of depends on the time of the year. But, it really uh, does. Like right now, mm. right now it's low. I'd say 10,000 bucks. So like 1 million views is $10,000. Oh, wow. Okay. That sounds high to me. And I, I also find maybe it's just music, but mine like, uh, it depends CPMs how long are. the, it depends how long it is. And also, uh, depending what kind of category you're posting to, like, like if you're in the financial space, they have like a higher CPM. And then, like, right. I think being that we're in the off-road space, we're, we're above average, honestly, because oh, there's wow, a cool. lot of just manufacturers trying to, you know, push products and ads. But and hit, hit, hit the, art, the audience yeah. that you attract. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, and then, I mean, maybe why it sounds high to you is because I'm sure, you know, a, a song is three minutes long, where if we're posting a 20-minute YouTube mm, vid, true. it can have way more ads true, in the middle. True. So you got to think about that as well. Good point. Yeah, I've but, never posted anything longer than, like, yeah, uh, two and a half minute music video yeah think, it's yeah. a beautiful thing it what is. what technology and social media has done i mean you can you can do it on your own right out your right out of your house like you said yeah i mean and that's what we've done too like you would never be able to i mean have a platform or have people know you 10 years ago or, or right. i should say 20 years ago you know without knowing the right people no it's the the world that i live in now I couldn't be more lucky, like, especially with TikTok. It's like this, the organic reach of TikTok mm -hmm. is just ridiculous. There hasn't been anything like it. And I, I don't know if there will be anything like it in the future. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I was so lucky to hit TikTok at that perfect time yeah. and just be creating the type of content that just seemed to connect and be able to then convert that to real listeners and real streams. Mm -hmm. It was, it's just, it, it's worked out incredibly well for me. Yeah. It's all about timing. Yeah. It's all about timing. I always, I always find it interesting. Like, uh, We've, we've met, we ran into a few TikTokers. Like, like, we didn't know who they were, but they were like, oh, you guys film for your YouTube video? And we're like, oh, we do TikTok. And then I'm like, these guys are TikTokers. Mm -hmm. And then when, let's say you had to describe yourself as a TikToker. Yeah. I know you're a, a rapper and songwriter, yeah. first and foremost. You're the person I would describe as actually making it as a TikToker. Well, thank yeah. you. Like, yeah, I've always... It's, I've it's always funny. It's, it's just like, a, yeah, if you're like, yeah, I'm a TikToker. That term has always like rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. If people yeah. are like, oh, he's, he's a TikTok rapper. And I, yep. I was like, eh, I don't like the way that sounds. But then also I'm like, 
but also that's how 95% of people know about me. So can I really be upset about that? Right. And then, and then it's also like, well, at one point, um, Ariana Grande was the Nickelodeon actress. Zendaya was yeah. the Disney that's actor. Very Zach Selena Zach Gomez. Zach that's was, very dude. true. So it's like uh, people will label you for what they know you as. I, I even now, because my shorts are going so popular, people refer to me as a YouTube rapper now. So uh, I'm like, oh, okay. So I, I am, people are going to attach to me what they know me from, which is totally fine. Um, because I feel confident knowing sort of like with the Zendaya situation, the Ariana Grande, that they were able to like elevate beyond that. Yep. And so that's what I hope for myself and have confidence in is that I will like, sure, I'm using TikTok to market myself, but I will make people see me and hear my music in a way that's that's more serious than just like, oh, wow, he's he's more than just like a TikTok rapper. He's really doing this thing and, and, and touring and blah, blah, blah. And all that's needed, I think, is yeah. that mindset right there. So that doesn't bother me now. It's like, yeah, you can you can comment whatever, whatever you want. I'm totally fine with it. And I understand it. Like I, I even since Will Smith, you know, started putting YouTube stuff out. Yeah. There's now all these kids who are like, oh, that's the YouTuber. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. like crazy. All right. If they can call Will Smith a YouTuber, <laughs> call me whatever you want, because, yeah. It's, it's not affecting, uh, you know, uh, um, my streams and my listeners and people discovering my music. So it's, it's all good. I'm, I'm at peace with it. I feel yeah. like YouTube used to kind of be the same way, though. Like, it was a little bit more of a derog, uh, you know, I uh, shouldn't like say YouTuber. derogatory. Uh, yeah, it's like YouTuber. Sure. It was more negative connotation. But now it's like, I mean, everyone kind of gets pop it. It's culture. Yeah. YouTuber, you, the kids want to be YouTubers. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like that was, what was the statistic? Well, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was like uh, 70% ask the, ask the, of 12 to 18 year olds. <laughs> That's wow. crazy. Well, it makes sense, though. I'm sure they just see it, and they're like, oh. and it is honestly the best job in yeah. the world, yep. I think, personally, but yeah. it's crazy. I mean, crazy. what you guys are doing. It's incredible. Yeah. You're, you're hanging out with your friends. You're making videos. Everybody's everybody's winning. You, I'm yeah. sure you get to you get, get to a point where you're growing it so much that you're, like, hiring your friends to do stuff, and, like, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Dude, it's amazing, though. It just goes back. I mean, the world we live in, you can seriously do, make anything happen if you want it bad enough. I mean, you got the power of Google at your fingertips. You can teach yourself how to do anything. You can learn, oh, what kind of mic do I need to start a podcast? And, and I mean, just if you want to do it, you can you can make it happen nowadays. I agree. Yeah. One of my good friends, Nick D, who I don't know if you guys. Yeah, okay, we yeah, use cool. his songs too. Yeah, yeah. awesome. So yeah. he's, he's incredible. <laughs> and so much of what I've learned about being independent and especially on TikTok, because he, he was like when he was first popping off with Pineapple and all that kind of stuff, he really kind of wrote a blueprint of how to market yourself on TikTok. And I've learned a lot from him. But, Where is he from? Uh, he's from Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're actually going to work on a, a collab project together very soon. Nice. So that's, that's going to be exciting. But uh, he's working on a book for independent artists and the title of the book is you don't want it bad enough because that's what he finds is the most common yeah. mistake is is you can look up all this stuff you you can you can look at other artists and how they're promoting their music you can follow what they're doing but if you don't want it bad enough you're not going to do it every day to be consistent yeah. like you have to be um, you're not going to learn how to if you can't afford a mixing and mastering engineer you have to learn how to do it yourself and mm -hmm. there's ways to do that on youtube all my early stuff on youtube the remixes and stuff you can read in the description it says mix and master by connor price it doesn't sound great but i learned enough from youtube on how to do it and um you just re yeah you gotta yeah. want it better we're, the, enough, we're the same way man just everything our whole operation is is done within the group and uh you know it's been seven years now but and it's just slowly gotten a little better if you go back and watch our videos you know, in the earlier days, it's yeah. pretty rough, but you got to start somewhere. Totally. And, and I mean, that's the one thing that I think has really contributed to the little bit of success we have is that we're just consistent. We yeah. always show up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just every week. It's awesome. And, uh, I mean, you have the same thing, you know, obviously you just consistency is key. It's very important. And, and having the, the focus to create what you're creating, let's say on TikTok, the, the vertical, mm. but then the focus to, change it up I would like your last uh skit let's say with baby no money mm -hmm. so good oh, because you. like spin the globe and he's like canada right right, <laughs> like, right yeah. just like uh switching it up yeah. is super important and you do that very well thank you yeah that's the one thing i keep trying to figure out how to do is like innovating new like formulas if you will like the globe thing worked really well and every time i posted a globe video it would always do like at least 10 million views whatever um but then it gets to a point where it's like okay one, I don't want to just keep recycling the same content. Two, so many other artists are copying this idea and watering it down, so I don't want to kind of keep doing it. And uh, yeah, number three, I just I want to be known as like a content creator that's innovating and doing new things. So whether it's like like the podcast setup where I kind of make it look like I'm on a podcast and then I go into a rap, that works yeah. well. Obviously, the skits work well with the weird brother and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so now at the moment, I'm actually right now trying to figure out like 
what's the next series? Like, what's the next thing I can do? Everybody wants a globe part two, but I also just don't want to be the globe guy. I feel like if yeah. I do this too much, it's like, oh, that's the globe guy. And I want to be more than that. So I want to figure out, okay, what's, what's the next series I can do? One idea I had was like getting a map of the U S and throwing a dart in whatever state it lands in, go, go to that state, find an artist, do a music video with them, blah, blah, blah. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Um, so our first video that ever blew up, we were driving a shifter cart, like a really fast go-kart, and we were so stoked that it got views, and we're like, we made it. And then CJ said the, some of the most important words for our YouTube channel ever. He goes, let's hold off on posting another shifter cart video mm. because we don't want to be known as the shifter cart channel. Mm. And it was like, it truly is one of the most important things we ever did back so it's like, I, I get that. Like, you, you don't want to ever be known. And you don't want to put yourself in a box, yeah. man. Yep. Oh, let me, let me yeah. speak on that real quick because I have another really good example that I think if anybody who's watching this is an independent artist trying to pursue this, it's like really valuable information because it was like a decision I made that changed a lot for me. So when I first started popping off on TikTok, it was for remixes. It was for like, like if, if, if I had a verse on so-and-so Drake song, uh, if I went into the studio and g Easy was working on and I do the back and forth remixes, and those would always go viral. Um, but I was then becoming known as the remix guy and like the freestyle guy. And when I would post an original song, all the comments were like, post another remix, post another remix. I'm like, damn. So I'm, I'm sort of cultivating this audience to expect remixes. How you, and good advice yep. to like, you could have been cultivating an audience who only wanted, what was it called? The, the shifter cards. Yeah, the shifter yeah, cards, yeah. which sound really cool. I got I to gotta see what those <laughs> yeah. look like. Um, you gotta, you, we'll put you in one one day. I'd love to, I'd love to. Uh, yeah, like sh shoot a music video with it or something. Dude, I was going to say, we should Actually, be in a music video. We have a whole video. bunch of <laughs> at this point. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Wait, we, we got to talk more about that. That would be I, sick. Yeah, wow. That'd be sweet. Like, even if we're, I'm like, like premiering part of a music video, like halfway through one of your videos or something like yeah. that. Oh my goodness. And it's just like, it just goes into a music video for like one verse or something. And what, uh, we, we should do something fun like yeah. that. Some dirt bikes or whatever. Totally. Some cool shit. Dude, can you put like, man, this is a lot to ask, but if you ever put like Seaboys TV into a rap and we use it bro that would be the most oh, legit thing ever everyone listening that knows that we use all of your songs would be like yo i'm gonna write that down yo they've fun. elevated <laughs> hold up i like to think <laughs> like, to do list i like name, to name think drop boys yeah can you freestyle like like mm. do you come up like with all these songs off the cuff or do you sit down and write them out so my my writing process is and real quick just to finish my last thought about the not being the remix guy so when i first connected with nick d the biggest advice he gave me was stop posting remixes uh, he's like, you need to pursue your original music because you can't profit off remixes. Even if you post yeah. it on YouTube, you can't, you know, copyright, blah, blah, blah. So because of that, I stopped posting remixes, just cold, cold turkey. And in, in the midst of posting one a day and them each getting 5 million views, I just stopped. And I only started promoting my original music. And for a long time, it just didn't connect. And I was losing followers, but I just stuck with it. And soon enough, um, the content ended up working. But yeah, de definitely go go all in on your original music. I think it's important to, 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 to do stuff like that, like the remixes, stuff that you know might convert well to get the initial audience, but don't do it too much or else you become you, you get put in that box. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so my creative process is the beat always comes first. So there's one producer I work with for like 95% of my stuff, Graham, who's like the beat tag at the start of all my songs. Hunted Graham. Yep. And he does a lot of Nick mm -hmm. D stuff. So he'll send me the beats. I'll put it into my session. And then, and then I will just record myself freestyling gibberish to try to find a melody, a, flow, a tone, yeah. a flow, a word. So I'm literally just like, I got a deal in the brands. They told me to break into the brands. Like I'm not saying anything, but I'll just record a bunch of ideas. I'll maybe kind of go a bit shoutier. No, I'll go more low key and monotone. I'll like go quick. That. I'll go slow. And I'll just record it all, like just my first instincts. Yeah. Um, and then I'll play it back. And I'll listen for the stuff that catches my ear. Ooh, that melody was good. That'd be good for the chorus. Ooh, that flow's sick. I'm going to put that in the verse. And then I'm sort of structuring out, copy and pasting, moving stuff around. And now I have like a skeleton of gibberish. Um, so the, the melodies and the flows and the feeling always comes first. And then I figure out how to put words and how to fill in the syllables. And that's the... That's the second part. Something I, like I love that. about your music is is that it's all upbeat and like happy. Like yeah. it, you're in a good mood listening to it. Something that I'm very um, cautious about is I don't like listening to like sad songs or like <laughs> songs that are, um, you know, can make make you feel like oh like depressed or anything like that. Just because mm. I don't know, I'm just very careful about what I put into my ears. Are you do you deliberately do that then? Not really. No, or you're I just an. You, I mean, obviously, you're very happy energetic person yeah yeah like so it yeah it goes into the music but I, i'm sort of i sort of make what what i'm feeling in that moment and just luckily for me over these last two years yeah i've been like in a good place and and so that's reflected in the music but i i do have older songs like gosh i've i've too many songs <laughs> <laughs> 
what is it called? Well, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of my own song. But I, I do have sad songs. Um, but just the stuff I've been making over the last, like, two years or so um, have, yeah, just been naturally upbeat and happier because that's just kind of how I've been feeling. And and I'm also thinking about, like, the content to make for it. And, and yeah, it's just it's fun to make fun, upbeat stuff because yeah. then the content's fun and upbeat and there's some playful moments we can throw in there and all that kind of stuff. So You don't really ever... I don't think you've ever sworn in any of the songs I've listened to. No. Do you do that obviously deliberately or just naturally? Or So the way it started was, so early on when I was just putting remixes on YouTube, I, I was swearing in my music. Um, but I, I, and I also, I don't even swear that much in my normal day-to-day life. So I think I was doing it in the music because it's like expected in this genre. Yeah. And I was almost kind of putting on this character and it didn't really feel like me. And interestingly enough, it was my mother-in-law. So <coughs> my, my wife's mother, Maria, uh, is it doesn't listen to music with swearing in it. And I remember one time, um, cause she's, and she's such a huge supporter of me, like with the acting stuff and she's a professional photographer. She does all my headshots. She's just, she's very involved and, and I, I love her a lot. We, we get along really well. Um, but she like would, she never talked about my music when I started doing music. And I was like, just out of curiosity, like, I'm, you know, you know I know maybe hip hop isn't your thing, but like, have you ever heard my songs? She's like, I tried listening to one, but you, you, you swear in it. And I, I don't listen to that. And I was like, whoa. It had never crossed my mind that there's so many people out there who don't listen to music that have swear words in it. And I was like, I might be losing out on a massive audience because I'm doing something that I don't even feel like is natural anyways. So I just sort of tested myself and challenged myself to write a few songs that didn't have any swear words in it. And then that was interesting too, because I started to realize that I swear as like, as like a crutch, like a, like a word to yeah, fill in something sure. like, like yeah. it's like, it's easy. Yep. So I'm like, Oh, now writing's more difficult, which is fine. Cause now I'm challenging myself. And then I just started putting out music like that just to just to try it. And now all of a sudden it's like I'm getting messages from like dads who are like, dude, I love your music. And now I listen to uh, your stuff on the way to school with my kid. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Um, and, and so now there's like this whole other audience that I'm tapping into because I'm not swearing in my music. And I don't feel like it's changing my music at all. It's, right. it's, it's So I was like, oh, I'm just going to stick with this thing. I think that that's the cherry on top. If it's not already amazing the cherry on top is that anyone can listen to it the mm. dad could listen yeah. to it yeah. on the way to school yeah. with the kid yeah and i also want to reiterate that i have no issue issue with people who do swear in their music i listen to explicit music all the time i have songs out right now that are explicit because the featured artist swears in their verse i'm not mm-hmm. going to tell them what to do and i i think people should rap how they speak and what the and if that comes out naturally all the power to you so i'm not like anti oh, all my music has to be clean because I, I have songs that are explicit because of the featured artist um, I just personally choose to not swear and, and it's challenging and fun and I connect with a bigger audience because of it. So I'm going to stick, yeah. gonna stick with it. Hip hop music nowadays, a good portion of it is just drugs, money and girls mm. or sex. It seems like, but yeah, yeah. some are so aggressive. And then, and then country music is about a truck here <laughs> and a girl. And <laughs> hey man, Dude. sometimes artists just have to speak on what, what, they're around and what their lifestyle is. And for a lot of hip hop artists, it is that. And so all yeah. the power to them to, to, to rap about that, you know? Um, and it's up to the listener to decide if that's something they want to listen to or not. I, I have nothing against whatever people want to say in their music. If it's authentic to them, if they're rapping about, <coughs> Oh, cars, chains and girls, and, and they're not about that life, but they're just projecting it. Cause right. they think that's what they have to do. Then I don't think that's cool. But if that really is the life they're living, then all the power to you. Cause that's organic and authentic to you. So yeah, it's tough to keep it going. If you got a front, you know, <laughs> right, like, right. especially and the, in the truth always comes out with, yeah. with Everyone's got a camera and yeah. But yeah, yeah. There's definitely artists who are who are putting on a front and yeah. The the truth always comes to light and I find if if music isn't authentic, it it rarely connects anyways. So that's why I, f- I feel like all the best and most popular artists in the world are like are really living the things that they're saying. And you're the best at being yourself. That's another thing I always tell. Like kids will ask, like, I want to be a YouTuber, and like they got their channel name is like. Uh, like B boys TV, like they like yeah. even copy uh, the name. I'm like, you gotta just be yourself. Don't try to like yeah. copy us because yeah. you know you'll never be able to be as good as who you really are. Yeah, and that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, it's so. like that kind of cheesy thing where it's like 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 you have to be yourself. Everyone else is taken. You exactly know, that, that whole thing. But exactly. there's really truth to that. Yeah, I've I've been experiencing that a little bit too when I see artists like who are like, hey, I I was inspired by your globe video. So I made this and then I go check it out and it's, but it's just a rip of my globe yeah, video. Dude. It's, it's the same edits. It's the same sound effects. I'm, I'm like, there's a, there's a fine line between being inspired and doing your own spin and just stealing it word for word. Yeah. And so we you, have people doing the same thing. They I copy can, our thumbnails, like literally copy our ideas how, and then they just do that, it poorly and it doesn't work. Well, there you go. So, so that doesn't bother you to a point where you've ever felt like you have to reach out or do something about it. Like, how do you guys deal with that? It's, you know, it's flattering, but, uh, yeah. it's, 
really annoying. Sure. I, I, but and rarely, then, rarely threatening, which is a good thing. Yeah, That's but good. it's like um, if a bunch of people are doing the same thing that you're doing, it dilutes what yeah. you're doing. So that's my issue because yeah, I sure. like there there are some very large artists right now that are doing the Globe videos and completely stealing it shot for shot, word for word, and then just putting their Damn. own song. Dude. That would, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, uh, it's annoying flattering, but bigger that's, than you. yeah, you, it's, and it's, then you're yeah. just like, well, shit, I don't want to do one this. One of thing. the artists is bigger than me. Dude, we've it's, had, it's frustrating. I, we, I'm not going to say names, but cause I, we honestly have no beef. Like we love every YouTuber we meet and whatever, yeah. but there's like a one bigger YouTuber or a couple bigger YouTubers that'll like sometimes basically redo a bit we already did. Mm. And then people will say that we copied them. I'm like, bro, I did this two years ago. I'm getting the same like, comments. It's so yeah. annoying. And and the other thing about like, for instance, like thumbnails, a lot of people have been kind of copying our thumbnail. Um, what is thing, what what is your like branded it's thumbnail? It's just like, like the way that it's set up, they copy like our sky. We'll cut out and put a, ba a better blue sky and like mm. with nice clouds, they'll use the exact same arrow. The way they mm. set it up, they blur the background, I all that. You, I get you. And I, because I, I mean, they see it works. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I don't so. blame them because like you're trying to fucking make something happen. Yeah. Um, excuse my language. But uh, <laughs> now we're like, yeah. 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 I can't promote this now. <laughs> but the thing that. Actually, I'm sorry, Maria. <laughs> Maria, yes, Maria. Yeah. I'm sorry. I keep watching. I promise. Sorry. It's a one time thing. That's yeah. Funny. Clicked off. I, but yeah, just Potty like mouth. she's gone. Yeah, she's gone. People see that, and I don't want them to click it, and then it's a terrible video, and they they're like, "Wow, that video sucked." And then they see our thumbnail get suggested, mm. and it looks very similar. Like, oh, I've already watched this guy. That's, and see, that's a great they point. They suck. Is it? It so really they, could be hurting. They stop your looking at ours. Yeah. yeah, and so that is one thing that actually does bug me. Yeah, and it's so hard, it's so frustrating because like in music, if someone were to copy my verse word for word. I could get that taken down no problem. True. If you copy someone's film shot for shot, it's mm -hmm. like you get sued for that. But yeah. but with content, there's like there's no specific rule set up. Like someone can post a Globe video with the exact same scripting, editing as mine, put in their own song at the end. It'll do well because the formula works. And and I can't I can't do anything about yeah. it. It sucks because yeah. like I've we've spent seven years like building and and creating this formula and then it's like you, now you just rip our formula you yeah. know it's, it, that's the thing that's actually annoying but i think what that's are you why gonna do? i think that's why it's also important to keep innovating and that's why i'm like thinking of instead of just you know doing the globe thing again i want to do something different and something new mm -hmm. so that people are always playing catch up with me yep. and then at the end of the day your legacy will be innovators and people yeah. will know mm -hmm. you as that and your youtube channel like like real ones know they know when someone's ripping you guys off yeah. and that you're the ogs of doing this certain style thing so Evolve it or die. Evolve yeah. or die. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's like, literally what we've so done you, our whole career. I'm sure you get it too. How do I get into music? So we get, you know, emails, DMs, whatever. How how do I start a YouTube channel? And I'm like, to be honest with you, less on the camera. Let, like, you, you don't need to focus on having the best camera ever. I tell them, pick what you want to do and innovate it. Just start. Like, yeah, but, just start. But, like, yeah. I, you know, I'm just saying, like, let's say, random example, unboxing videos. I'm like, do an unboxing video and do it different than anyone's ever done and creative and, like, good. Obviously, that's bad advice because they, they still have to come up with the hardest thing, the idea. But I'm like, yeah, do it different and better. Than you got to do what you done. want, though, too, because if you're, like... If let's say you're like, oh, unboxing videos are popping off, I'm gonna do unboxing that's videos, true, but you actually yeah. don't like unboxing, it's not gonna do work because, like, yeah, you, you can do that for 10 right. years, but that's what I'm saying. It. Like, so what do you want to do and then do it differently? Yeah, and there's still elements that I'm inspired by from other people, like with the glow video, I do the like one, one word text at a time, which is very Mr. Beast, and that's where I was inspired from that. Mm -hmm. from. Um, and so there's definitely certain elements that, again, there's that fine line between like being inspired by someone. And then just ripping it off. So it's it's sort of like, yeah, look look at what, if you want to do videos in the motocross world, look at videos that you like and that are working. Ask yourself, why is that working? Okay, how can I put my own spin on that now? And then and then just, ju just start. Just do it. Like, yep. people worry about the quality. What camera do I need? It's like, the right. fact you're asking that is a yeah. problem. Like, right. you, you have an iPhone yeah. in your pocket. Dude, yep. we say the same thing. Don't. Even if you don't. You, got, you have iPhone? something yeah. in your pocket that, oh, that can take videos. Even if it's 720p, no one, no one really cares about quality anymore. Like, I film all my skits with the front-facing iPhone camera. Okay. I put on a tripod. I, I hit record. Oh, you think the front-facing is better? No, it's there not necessarily better, but that's interesting. No, no it's, it's, just, it's, it's good it's for me because I just I film by myself in my room, so I can put it on the tripod. And look at yourself. See, gotcha. see where I'm framed, yep. hit record, and then talk to nobody and look crazy for a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> and then turn the camera around and play the other character and then edit it together. I also, all the audio I use is from the iPhone, so I'm in Premiere, like, gaining everything up 10 dB because I'm too far yeah. away. Yep. But it just works. And I think people specifically go to TikTok to find 
organic feeling content. Yeah. If they want the feels professional real. stuff, yep. they'll watch Netflix or they'll watch you know a documentary on YouTube. But they, they want something that feels authentic to the app, which is very DIY. And so th- don't overthink it. Like, 100%. You're, people overthink too much. It's like a whole new style. I mean, it, like especially with music, like you were saying, like the what do they call it? Like drill, drill type music or whatever. It's just like the SoundCloud, like Mm. you made it in your room and I don't know. It's just a whole vibe. Uh, Yeah. People's biggest mistake is just like not starting or overthinking. Like even people who come to me are like, how do I get into the music business? I'm like, the fact you're asking that is crazy. Like you have the internet. Like I never once had to ask someone like, how do I do it? Because the answers are there. Even if it's not written in an article, look at your favorite artist, look at what they're doing. I think the best way to learn something that someone is doing is be close to them. So if you could like say, hey, I would love to for one month, I will fly to you. I will even just pick up your coffees for you. Like I just want to shadow you and see how you work for a month. Like you're offering value. Yeah. You're coming to them to help them for, you know, offer your work. Like I think doing that for a month to be around somebody that you look up to is so you would learn so much when we were in moab the other day (coughs) this kid pulls up and he's like dude i saw your stories i had to meet you guys and then he's like "Uh, it's my it's been my dream to like be in one of your youtube videos and then i was like i mean i can't promise you anything man and then (laughs) a lot of shit went down and we had to uh go pick up this that was him (laughs) that's what what i'm saying i i said like i can't promise you anything like yeah, you know, what are you going to say? Oh, here you are, Hester. <laughs> Shout out, Hester. But uh, he Shout helped out. us out getting the R6 out. And then I'm like, this is it. This is it. You're providing <laughs> shot. mad value. Yeah. And then, like, it's just too good. Yeah. So, providing value. Wait, so will, will he be in the video? Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. there we go. He, he drove, Wait, he what's his name? Hester. Hester. Shout he, out to He Hester. drove a big, big yellow diesel into the rocks of Moab and picked up our, our, our crotch rocket that Evan... Uh, Yardy down the and then he ran out of fuel <laughs> Dude. Wow. coming back. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and look now we're talking about him. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. like that's what I'm saying. Like provide value. Don't just like, like because when you're asking questions, how do I do this? You're 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 now asking me or I you guess in to, a sense to, like, you're being a burden, you, in, sort in, sort yeah, of. Yeah. But and there's nothing wrong with that because everyone yeah. has to start somewhere. True. But but there's a way to to get the answer, and it's either asking for it or providing value and like like putting yourself in a position to figure out the answers because you're in in the right spot at the right time. So. If you join a label, mm. is ninety five percent of our YouTube videos gonna get copywritten? Probably. Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah. yeah. Damn. I, I won't though. Like, like, Please like, yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. And even now, like, like, um, like, even when I dist- like upload my music through DistroKid, there's a thing that says like, click the box here for YouTube ID, and I never click it because I think it's way more important for my music to be used by content creators and giving it that natural awareness than making a few extra cents because yeah. I'm like charging you to use like. I, oh, I, we appreciate that. Yeah. Of course, yeah. appreciate I, I appreciate you guys using it. We're yeah. like, man, dude, because honestly, I stopped using yours. For a while when you were really blowing up mm. off of the fear that that was going to happen. No. So I, I have that Spotify playlist called like, you know, Connor Price and Nick D. Like whenever we have a song um, that like because there's some like I, I did a song with Idris Elba called Courtney Cox and his yeah. label set up stuff that it's copyright. So there, there are a few songs I have because of other artists that are on it. That, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. That I know. Theme. I've checked all of them. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So but <laughs> if you check out that, that that playlist, I'll keep updating it with all the songs that are completely copyright free. And yeah, I, I don't see myself ever in a situation where I'm going to just all of a sudden turn it on. It's what a, a genius, release. <laughs> genius strategy, honestly. And I don't know if there's really anyone else doing it. Like you there, there be are kind there, of the, one of the early adapters. No, so it. I was kind of inspired. There's this artist named Nefix. I hope I'm pr- pronouncing it correct, but he's, he's an independent hip hop artist. Have you heard of him? I heard mm-hmm. you nod your head. Mm-hmm. So he, he, he does that. He uploads like a song every week. He's been doing it for like three years. His output is insane. Um, and he's a, like an independent guy. I got that Russ mentality of just like consistent yeah. releases, independent. And he doesn't copyright any of his stuff. And he's very vocal about that. Like whenever he posts and and like whenever he even posts the YouTube audio in brackets, it'll say like copyright free, like content creators use nice. this. And I was like, that's genius. I like that a lot. So that that was a big inspiration for me. So shout out to Netflix. Man. It just seems weird that uh, I get there's all angles. It just seems weird to not do that almost. I just love it. Obviously, we appreciate it a ton. But yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons of, of yeah, both. Yeah. Like, And from the label side, right, all they care about is, uh, you know, making as much money off the songs as possible. So, of course, they're going to copyright ID. So if someone does use it, they're getting paid for it. But then on, you know, the flip side, I have gotten so many listeners and fans because of you guys using the 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 song in your videos that if I had, first of all, if I was copywriting it, you wouldn't have used it in the first place. So it wouldn't have happened. But even if you did, and I turned it on later, I would have made what, like a few extra hundred dollars or whatever. Right. But I, but I'm now 
having like real fans. These could be fans that show up to my shows and pay for merch. Like that, that long-term gain of exposure through content creators using your music could be worth a hundred, a million times more than just getting a few cents on the dollar. Yeah, like, and, and that to me is worth way more of the risk of not copywriting it God, for YouTube. I just can't believe, I, I guess I can believe, but I did not know that you could make such a bag off of streaming. Dude, dude, that well, streaming money is crazy. I've see, been thinking about that the whole either. time, dude. No, it's it's yeah, like, shit, man. We should just start streaming. <laughs> start rapping? <laughs> no, no, it's it's really interesting because there is this um this headline conversation that happens around Spotify like not paying the artists. And a yeah. a, a big reason that is, well, it, it's it's for two reasons. One, a lot of artists are with labels and they don't have ownership of their master. So they're making anywhere from you know, zero to 20% of that percentage already. But most of the time, it's just, it's not even close to 20. So, so they're getting a percentage of the, the percentage. Um, and then also it's, it's very difficult to get a million streams on a song. A lot of artists aren't doing that. I, yeah, I'm I very imagine. fortunate to be in a place where over the last month, my catalog has done 60 million streams. That, that's insane. Like I'm, I can't believe I'm at that point. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to get there. So I understand why that conversation exists. But once you do start streaming a lot, and if you own the music, the money's crazy. So yeah. do, you, do, you, do you spend a lot of money? Are you a big big spender? Not really. I, I just bought like a Mercedes. That was like my first kind of big nice. purchase. Um, but yeah, uh, what kind? Uh, an E350. Okay. You're, when you're not content creating, not doing your job, mm. what do you like to do for fun? Uh, well, I'm a dad now, so that takes up a lot of my time. A lot of it. I'm up sure. in the morning with, with Jude. We walk to Starbucks every morning. Then we get there. Bree and I kind of talk about what we want to do that day. We have uh, the sitter comes at like between 9 and 10 a.m. And then that's my like four to five hours where I get to be in my studio. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's really like work or hanging with my son yeah. now. Um, yeah. Prior to that, uh, I love video games. I'm like a big like Super Smash Wait. Bros fan. I, <laughs> okay. I, I actually used to compete. I used to go to tournaments. No way. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like so video games was and kind of is still a big part of my life i still like love watching twitch and keeping up with the tournaments and all that kind of stuff but yeah now it's really just like music content editing luckily i can do everything in my room yep. um from making the music to editing the skits filming the skits or i'm like hanging with my yeah, son beautiful or thing having a date night with brie like yeah. it's yeah it's i really i don't do too much other than work and just hang with family so, so no gambling though no, no zero. never you, no you i, I rarely go out where brie and i are very much homebodies we're like like our date, our perfect date night is like ordering sushi, watching Ted Lasso. You know, it's just Amazing. like just being in and enjoying some time to ourselves. Man, you know? I'd probably be a lot better off if I was like you. <laughs> what, not, not, no gam gambling. not gambling? I, I don't no, ever just win. a degenerate. CJ, you should have a kid. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm ready for that either. I can barely take care of myself. How old are you guys? 26. 26. Yeah, how old are you? 23. Uh, 28. 28. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I'm 27. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want to go hit the blackjack table after this? No, no, I've, smart. I've, I've never, I've never gambled a day in my life. There's something, there's something I kind of want to. Well, I was going to say crazy to me that you live in Las Vegas. You I never know, right? gambled a day in your life. Everyone always assumes. I'm just like, no, it's not. There's something I felt like, you know, you have to walk through the casinos all the time to get to restaurants and mm -hmm. stuff like that. They're like in every lobby. They're in grocery stores. It's crazy. Yeah, you, you I know. Just, you're not just I sucked know. to the blackjack table. No, oh. it, no. If anything, it's the opposite. I'm like, really? I, I feel so depressed, like seeing a lot of these people just like there, and they just they look so sad. And I'm, I'm like, oh man, like the, it like hurts. The me. slot machine just yeah, just yeah. No, seriously, it like it genuinely like depresses me that I know a lot of and, and there I. I don't know. I, without getting into too many detail, there, there are people in my life who I, who have gambling problems, and I've seen what that has done to the people around them. It's not appealing at all. No, zero. Do you think you have that yeah. kind of uh, trait, maybe uh, addictive or that, obsessive? That, that scares me too, especially with the video game thing. I, I like would get you know obsessive, yeah, obsessive I, about wanting to be the best at something, and I, I'm afraid I could get addicted. to I it. feel like anybody who's like not anybody, but most people that are like doing or really good at their craft have that trait, that mm. kind of obsessive trait. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know where you just go all in on like one thing or whatever. You just kind of have a tendency to overdo things. So you're probably right on that. Mm. You, you would like it a lot or, you know, what's interesting too is, so I'm now good friends with Hoodie Allen, who was like growing Dude. up one of my favorite yeah. artists. Yeah. And we just went on tour together in Europe and he's actually coming to Vegas. Uh, is tomorrow Saturday? 
Yeah, he's coming. What well, day Friday? Is it? I don't uh, know. Uh, Friday, I think. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Dude, so he's, he's coming tomorrow That's for dope. like the World Series poker tournament or whatever. Oh, he's, so he, a, he's a poker guy? Oh, okay. Huge, yeah. So during COVID, um, when things slowed down for him, he went like all in on like just like. Nice. Like, and he's really good. Oh. Um, he was just he was at a celebrity game last night with like Bryce Hall and these other TikTokers. Really? And he won thirty eight grand. He like came out on top. He's Damn. a really good poker player. So he, he be he's nice. been trying to convince me to like, and, and I'm scared. Like, I'm like, I'm not gonna dude, do it poker now. actually is it's gambling, but it takes skill. <laughs> oh, oh, it takes uh, skill 100%. versus like the slot machine is pure luck. Blackjack is it takes a little bit of skill, but it's still mostly luck. Totally. But like poker, if you're good, you can. To, to me, there's still that element of like, oh, I could lose money. And yeah. that's like my least favorite yeah. feeling. So I'm yeah. like, Ugh. oh, dude, last night going home and coming home with way less money than you started with. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah, bro, I was just sick to my stomach. Yeah. So ha <laughs> that's a th so yeah. have, have you ever like felt like like it was worth it because it was fun? Or are you always like, <sighs> yeah, honestly, fun, because. Yeah. OK, that's good. Because that's I good. don't live here and I come uh, here and, and you, you bring, probably have a certain amount that you say yeah, I'm bring I'm not a couple spend thousand any. bucks. Yeah, yeah. And it's like if I lose it all. That sounds it's very fun. healthy. And I, honestly, I enjoy flex. I enjoy it. I have, a, I have a really good time doing it. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I'll never <laughs> no. say never. Maybe I will, you know, at least try it. I think if I set a boundary of like, especially with poker, it's like, oh, there's like a $5,000, you know, mm -hmm. you know, to, to get into to, to the game. So I know I'm spending that much. I'm comfortable losing that much because I'm aware that I probably will. And it's more for like the fun element. Like I'm sort of playing a game. It's like, you know, you go to Chuck E. Cheese. Like you're paying a certain amount. You're yeah. not, you're not going to make anything. You don't even have the yeah. opportunity yeah. to win there. <laughs> so just, I mean, shit. You're, you're going home with like the uh, Chinese finger thing. Some, some right, tattoo. Right, yeah. yeah. You'll get something. Out of yeah. It. Um, so yeah, my, but my worry is that I get like addicted to it and I just like, yeah. yeah, it is a slippery slope though. And that's why when we go home, then there's like these pull tabs at bars. I don't even know if they have them here, but it's like the only kind of gambling that you can do. And Ev's a degenerate. Every single time we walk into a restaurant or, or a gas station, this dude is getting these pull tabs, oh, 20 just, bucks. Is, you might as well just throw it in the garbage. Wait, so what, what does it do? It's like it's like a pull tab, and you might lose. win like fifty bucks. Oh, so it. it like tells you right away. Yeah, it tells you right away. But, it tells you right away. But when I go, <laughs> when, yeah, it tells you right away when you lose. But when I go home, I just I don't do that because I'm like, mm. it's a slippery slope. Yeah. And and then I and watch you're chasing Evan. losses. Yeah. So I guess coming to Vegas is like this is the only time. Yeah. Enjoy it, and then you go home. Uh, if you can set, if you can set a limit, and you're you're genuinely having fun and enjoying it, all the power to you. My thing that. is, I didn't, I don't have a debit card, so like oh I can't go to the ATM. So the the many money I bring is the uh, only money I could okay, I could smart. withdraw so or, you or won't spend. Even be, yeah, like yeah. tempted and tempted. Smart. Well, I did go to Ken last night. I went to my sugar daddy last night. <laughs> hey Ken, come on, give me some of that moldy that's money. That's <laughs> I don't have a debit card, Ken. <laughs> that's amazing. So like circling back on like Hoodie Allen, uh, uh, yeah, we huge fans of him who is someone that you were super stoked to work with and who is someone that you want to work with that ha and haven't yet um er everybody i've worked with has been awesome like all those globe video artists they're all so incredible and like whenever we would find someone we're like oh this is the perfect guy for netherlands oh this girl she's from india perfect and then it just um, kept getting better yeah and and so we would get in a whatsapp group chat it would be me that artist and my wife brianna and we'd like plan everything we'd send them the beat like we'd we would be very involved with them um and even to this day we'll like check in or they'll you know um so i've gotten close to a lot of them and i was just in amsterdam because i did my first european tour and i got to meet one of the artists in person we shot a music video for spinning it was mm -hmm. like the whole thing has been crazy so that like i haven't had really a bad experience working with an artist uh i've done two songs with idris elba who i've been a huge fan of because you know he's he's an actor he's a dj he, he does a lot of things yeah it seems so random yeah, right. I know. Because I just know him from yeah, acting. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. From like The Office or Luther or whatever, um, The Wire. Um, but he does so many things at such a high level. And that, that is really inspiring to me because that's something that I want to do and continue to to try to have a really solid acting career, a great music career, maybe get into directing, et cetera. And so people like him and, and Childish Gambino, Donald Glover, that, that to me would be my, like, it's like oh, Drake, Gambino. And Russ, those are like those are my three guys that I would love to have the opportunity to work with sure. in any way. I would oh, from I would love to see. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. I would love to see Gambino and you. I mean, I just, I, I just would love to. It's really interesting. To meet him. Like he uh, is, yeah, like he is an anomaly when 100%. it comes to acting alone. Oh, and dude, dude, he's man. This guy, I could yeah, go on and on. Yeah. This guy, I, I first started listening to or not listening to him, watching him when he used to do a comedy skit. On, on YouTube, he had this channel called Derek Comedy, where him and his guys from NYU would upload skits. And this was in 2006. This was the start of YouTube. Uh, and that's wow. how I first discovered him. And then he was acting on uh, Community, and then he was writing for 30 Rock, and then he started doing stand-up, and then I discovered he had music, he raps, and now he created Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh my gosh, this dude is just like, 
I, I he's one of the most talented. Man, people you might of our be in, like the truest OG Gambino fan ever. Two thousand six. I know. I feel like <laughs> such a um, yeah, like a, like a hipster when I'm like oh, I've been listening since two thousand six. Yeah. But I really have. Like yeah, that YouTube channel where he was just doing comedy stuff. I'll never forget when I was young, just like and showing all my friends, and we just laugh our asses off at these stupid sweet. skits that they and they're still on YouTube. Derek comedy, it's yeah, like love to young, check it out. young childish Gambino doing comedy. It's really funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Idris Elba was awesome to work with. I love whenever I work with Nick. We always have so much fun. I always have so much fun recording songs with him. Like like all like in so many of our songs, you'll hear us like laughing at the start or at the end, and that really was just us in the booth just laughing or like throw that laugh at the end because that's really funny. Um, yeah, yeah. Russ, Russ would be awesome. He he recently followed me and DM'd me like showing me love, yeah, which was sick. like to me like a, such a huge moment. Um, so yeah, who knows what could happen there? But that would be awesome. That's sick, bro. Thank you so much. For no, thank thank on, you dude. guys, and seriously, thank you for using the music. And uh, I would love to figure out a way for us to like do some sort of fun collab because yeah, it seems like like our audience is like like my like clearly the the people that watch your videos seem to like my music, oh, and yeah. that seems like yeah, a, good, a good marriage of you know. Cre- creative yeah, we'll fly you up I'm to just Minnesota like, just for a couple days and just hey, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm glad that we've been able to. I mean, just maybe glad to just meet you, man. Tiny, yeah, a little no, tiny bit, be able to give back to you, like you were saying, <clears throat> with some people going over and showing love on your YouTube channel. So, yeah. guys, seriously, go check out oh, Connor Price's music. You haven't music. heard of him already. <laughs> Every it's it's available everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All three platforms. Just my full name, Connor Price, C O N N O R. Follow him on Instagram. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much, dude. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, thank you for listening, guys. Peace. We'll see you next week. Till next Peace. time. Peace.